Hello, this is Sammy. I work as a wiki writer for the mod Age of Oblivion for Seven Days to Die. And this is part two of how to install the mod. This one will be on the server side. Let me turn my music down, I apologize. Okay, so this is going to assume a couple of things. One, it's going to assume that you have access to your server via remote desktop connection. This is usually for VPS or for dedicated servers, or if you are like me, you actually have your own dedicated server system in your own house to provide LAN games for your family. In either case, it's assuming you have a remote desktop connection to said server. If you are using any other host that does not give you a remote desktop connection or only gives you a console, some of this will work for you and some of it won't since it may not be as accurate. You will have to contact your host to find out exactly how to install mods or your server setup in that case. That out of the way, assuming you have access to remote desktop and you are connected to your server, the first thing you want to do is one of two things to get the mod. You can do as you did in part one, go to the link and download the zip, or you can send your zip that you would have downloaded from the site for your setup to your server, which is what I did. Oh, sorry, wrong one. I actually moved it into the downloads folder. So this is the exact file that I downloaded in part one. And this is what we are going to need. I also do still have 7-Zip installed on this computer because that is what I like to use. So I'm going to open that here as well. With a server, it's going to be a little bit different. Uh, for a server, you are actually going to want to have Steam Command install 7 Days to Die for you. But I also personally like to keep all of my servers separate and in their own folders and usually on the desktop. As you can see, I have, I already have a seven days to die age of oblivion 2.8 folder here. This is our family's LAN server. It is currently down for demonstration purposes for this video. I will create another one so that you can see exactly how I create the Age of Oblivion modded 7 Days to Die server for us. So first I'm going to create a new folder because this is what I want to put it in. And I'm going to just name it 7 Days to Die AOO testing or test. That'll work. And I'll move it over here so that it's uh, no, I'm not. Okay. Let's not auto-arrange the icons, and let's not align icons to grid. I apologize for that. It got a little weird at times. Okay. So, here is my new folder. Now, I'm not just going to go into the folder because I need to get Steam command open. And Steam Command is actually in its own install. If you have not downloaded Steam Command or you've used Steam Command before, I highly encourage you to go to this website right here. This is the 7 Days to Die dedicated server install guide from Valve themselves and will give you instructions on how to install Steam Command, how to start it, even how to install 7 Days to Die. I use this quite a bit, just simply because I forget the numbers quite a bit for the different applications, 
and as you have probably seen we play a lot of different games and we have hosted a lot of different servers so i use this site quite a bit for everything really uh, regarding servers now so i installed already steam command onto my c drive i actually have it in its own folder so i know exactly where to go for it and i will show you why now i am going to go down here and this is recent command prompt but you can just type in cmd and it'll bring in up command prompt now i am going to do cd the colon slash steam command and that'll take me into the steam command folder this one right here so we'll minimize that for now and I am going to start steam command if you haven't installed it you're gonna to have to go through the whole install process of steam command it really isn't difficult follow the guide I promise you it's very easy so once you go into steam command just type steam command to run it and once you're at the steam prompt then you're going to do login anonymous Now I'm back at the Steam command. So now I want to tell it which directory I want to install it at. And in that case, it's going to be this one here. 7D2D-AOO-test. So following the guide, we're going to put in force underscore install underscore dir space. And then the exact path to our folder. In this case, it is going to be C colon slash users slash our username slash desktop slash 7D2D dash AOO dash test. And before I hit enter, I'm going to right click on the folder and compare my file make sure that it is correct it is and then hit enter and I always compare it because I've installed it into the wrong folder than before and then gone crazy looking for where it installed it to and if you do not do this it will actually install it directly into the steam command folder itself and it becomes a nightmare because it it'll put it in here and you're like what the heck and you don't expect it to put it in there so put it into another folder so now that we've set it into a new folder we're going to do app underscore update 294420 and this will download the current seven days to die if you were wanting to do say a experimental like a20 came out as an experiment and you wanted to be part of that beta experimental process there is a way to do that for this making a server for that that is in the guide the mod will not run on that so we're running just vanilla so we're going to do app underscore update and its code and hit enter now it will go to Steam and grab Seven Days to Die, the full game, and download it to your folder. And this is going to take a while. So I will be back as soon as it's done. Okay, it's finally done. It is installed. You can see the folder here is filled. We're actually done with Steam command. So we'll type exit and exit again for now we'll go ahead over here now here is where you want to do any of your server stuff all of your server config and set up your server for however you want it the server name etc so let's open this now I use notepad plus plus because it makes it so much easier to read stuff especially these config files so let's call this Server name, we'll call it testing 
AOO server. And server password testing password. I can type temp. And now we'll leave it at the same port. Visibility is two, so it will be public. Uh, we don't need that. Uh, let's set it to zero. This is just a test server. But normally you'd set it to two, so it would be public. And... Hmm. I think everything else we're going to leave. We're going to leave that. Um... I almost never do navigating. Perfectly fine if you like to. I'll do a random world and let's see. Dragon testing server 21. I don't know. And we'll leave it there. Game name AOO test. Yeah, everything else should be good. Okay, so we'll go ahead and save that. As good server maintenance, if this is going to be a long-term running server and you know that there's potentially updates coming from the fun pimps in the future, that you might need to reinstall the server for whatever reason, anything like that, back up your server config. Because if you have to download or even verify the files again, your server config will get wiped out. So I always copy it and then paste it back. And then I will label this rename server config backup. So that if it ever does get wiped out, you have a backup of your original config and you're safe. Or you can move it to another folder, whatever you want to do. But keep a backup. So our server's set up now technically, except for the fact it does not have our mod. Now you would actually install the mod. So unlike before where I went into the individual folders here and here and put them where they're supposed to go, I'll show you what you can do. You can just highlight both of them, drop it into one of this blank white space over here, and it'll copy everything over for you. It's almost done. There we go. Okay, so the mod is now successfully installed. And the next thing that you need to do is bring up your command prompt again. Yes, I know I closed it earlier. But you're going to go to this folder now. So we will go to cd desktop slash 72d dash ao dash test. And now we're going to do back. Uh, period slash start dedicated. So this also has a key point here. If you ever run into any issues with the server, even with your main game, but with the server in particular, and you're asked for the output file, that output file is what was shown on that screen. Oh. Select any key to continue. And it will actually get put out right here. So it's under the seven days to die server underscore data for a server. It's under this. And it'll get put out as the output log daddy for the dedicated server with the date and time that the server was started, not when it ended. And this will be continuously added to as long as the server is running. So this is the log that you will need for any troubleshooting. Creating a world by random world generation is going to take quite a while. So I will be back once it's done. Okay, I had a little bit of trouble there. Um, but I think I've gotten everything set up. Our server is back up. I had to take it back down. And I actually had to turn EAC off because 
we play with EAC off. We don't play on public servers. And, and my system isn't set up to have EAC on at the moment. And I didn't want to turn it back on right now. And this is just a LAN server anyway, so I've turned it off. And um, brought the server back up. So now, I should... I have seven days to die up. I should actually be able to get into the game. There we go. So now it's going to take roughly uh, about ten minutes to get logged into the server. I'll be back as soon as it comes up. Okay. So here we are in the actual game. Sorry, I have to switch back over to the window. Here we are in the actual game, and you will know, first of all, that the mod's installed because the UI is different. You have the SMX up here, and different UI here and down here, but also you'll notice that the entire starting quest is different, and it gives you a little bit of background and story as to the Age of Oblivion. And, yep, it'll give you, you know, this is your first one. But the starting quest is completely different. He has removed the basic, you know, find so much stone and grass and wood and such. If you're playing Age of Oblivion, it's assumed you know how to play Seven Days to Die. If this is your first time playing Seven Days to Die, I recommend you play it vanilla before you play Age of Oblivion. That is for certain. But now you have it all installed, and now you have all the wonderful things coming with Age of Oblivion, and so much to look forward to. And playing with your friends on your server. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, definitely join the Discord for Age of Oblivion, and we can answer any questions that you have there. And I hope this helps. Have a good one.